Okay. Uh, this is the second game of the first match uh, at the 20 sided store uh, Netrunner tournament in Brooklyn, New York, which took place on October 6th, 2013. I'm on the right playing a slightly modified Wizard Darwin deck from the one that I played at the Complete Strategist tournament. Uh, I basically took out one Plaskry, took out my emergency Crypsis, put in some imps, modif took out, you know, I switched the economy around to have some Armitages, uh, you know, one less liberated accounts. I found there were cases where I wanted to use liberated accounts, but I didn't have six credits and it was a pain in the butt. Um, slight modifications. You know, taking out the one Plaskry is dangerous, especially when you see, well, there's, there's Wayland on the other side, of course. Building a better world by burning down half of it. Um, but uh, I figure I can use Imp, you know, and hit some of those Scorched Earths or Sea Sources, trash them. Uh, you know, run HQ, run R&D with that Imp. So, uh, yeah, it's not as not as safe a bet. <laughs> I might go back to what I used to play. Uh, that Emergency Crypsis, you know, definitely has uh, its cases. It won me a game or two. Uh, I also want to let people know, uh, if you only know me from my Netrunner videos, uh, I do a lot of stuff, uh, including this podcast I've been doing since 2005. Uh, it's called Geek Nights. It's about all sorts of geeky things. Uh, it's actually four separate shows, tech, anime, gaming, right? This, and uh, if you go to frontrowcrew.com, you will see what that is all about. There are hundreds and hundreds of episodes, all free, Creative Commons licensed, whatever. Uh, I also make appearances, uh, guest speaking appearances, at lots of geeky conventions. Uh, the next one coming up is not the New York Comic Con. I don't go to that anymore, uh, even though I live in New York City. Uh, the next one coming up for us is actually uh, MAGFest. Uh, New Year's, right after New Year's, in uh, very close to Washington, D.C., in National Harbor. in the uh, I think it's uh, the Gaylord International, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but MAGFest is amazing. It's the Music and Games Fest. It is 24-7 gaming and concerts. They're mostly, you know, nerdy bands there. Uh, Machine Supremacy is going to be there. First time in the U.S. ever. Holy shit. Uh, there was net running going on there last year. Mostly me and my friends with our core set and one expansion. <laughs> um, but I imagine there's going to be a lot more net running going on there this year. Or at least I'm going to try to make sure there is. Uh, I'll be running there if no one else. So, that's enough chit-chat. Let's get down to this game of Netrunner. Alrighty. Go, Corp, go. Let me guess. Install, install, advance. Install, 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 take credit. Install, install, hedge fund. Install, install. Looks like a hedge fund or a beanstalk. Yep, looks like a hedge fund. Okay, turn one. I sure gambled and I ran R&D. It's a shadow. So I guess he's getting two credits. Nothing I can do about that. And the trace. He set the trace to three, so I paid the three. I figure losing a credit, not as bad as losing a click. Oh! Oh, look at that. Top deck. What luck. Don't want to run again, though, because even though I'll get in and see a card, which I might be able to trash with my wizard credits, uh... That will give him more credits from his shadow. And that's not good. So I decided here to install the cyber feeder and then install the whale and get it growing immediately. I made a mistake here. I actually gypped myself of a credit. I could have used the cyber feeder credit to help install the whale. Instead, I paid the full price. Uh, that's what you get for not paying attention to details. A lot of winning a Netrunner is just paying attention to those really tiny things not making mistakes like that. Yeah, I could have had two credits right now and not one. Well, it doesn't make a big deal in the long run. Um, in the short term, that could be a big deal. Right? I mean, let's say I wanted to run HQ and there was an ice wall. Well, having that one credit meant I could have gotten in with my now one strength whale. So I'm trying to draw into my deck while the cyber feeder slowly fills up the whale. So it's like, oh, by the time I'm set up, he's either going to have to waste a turn clearing virus counters, um, 
or I'll be able to run, right? So I'm going to just sort of try to take money here, uh, and I'm going to try to get my whale strength up, get some personal touches, maybe find my pro contacts, uh, install an ice carver if I can find one. Oh, data sucker is good too. That always helps, right? Archives is wide open. So if he makes a remote now, I can just run archives a few times and go for it. It's not like there could be an archer there yet. Uh, he does not have uh, an agenda to sacrifice. And he's really piling up the ice. Uh, you know, a lot of people play this game where they just sort of pile up and keep installing ice face down, even though it, none of it's been used yet. Um, I guess sometimes it can work. Um, you know, but it's sort of like uh, if you let them have all that unresed ice without running, basically they're getting defense for free. But uh, if there's a lot of face down ice, can you really afford to run, right? If you're not going to get in or if those ice might hurt you. Right. See, right now I'm in a situation where the whale is strength three and I have a data sucker, so I could run. I imagine most of the whale and ice that he could res now is going to be strength three. You know, Caduceus is the, is the strength I'm worried about, really. Uh, ice wall would be one, right? He can't res an archer. He has nothing scored, so if I'm at three, I'd run. Uh, and here he goes advancing. He advanced three times. That's probably a four strength ice wall. Um, I'm imagining anyway. So he just really, you know, by advancing that, it's like, well, can't get into HQ. And that could could be Swarm, right? Swarm's a card now. I was thinking about it. And he had enough to res it for sure. Okay, so I'm going to, now I'm starting to set up. I can pile on my money with the liberated accounts. Really what I'm doing is I'm waiting until either A, I can get into R&D with a medium, right? Which means six strength, uh, you know, because by the time I can get into R&D with a medium, you know he's going to have a hostile takeover. The, the odds are just that he will, right? If he doesn't, whoa, then I can go in a lot earlier. Um, or B, I'm waiting for him to set up a remote that I can attack, right? If he's not setting up a remote, then it's basically it's like, oh, well, that's time for me to set up. I am not going to let him scorch me, right? I'm basically always keeping tons of cards in my hand. Uh, so he would need a double scorch. And I'm always keeping tons of credits on the table. So that even if I do run, say, run archives to get data sucker tokens, he can't, he, you know, can't see source me off that. So we're nicely, uh, methodically... Building up the whale. Piling on the money. Okay, so he ices up the archives. He sees my data sucker, right? He knows if he leaves archives wide open, I will be able to get into anything I want. Even if he just cleared virus counters. Because, um... Use those data sucker counters, especially now I got two data suckers. He's moving his hostile to the side. Yeah, see, I'm not really getting the cards I want. I'm looking for, um, you know, I have surges, but I don't want to use those unless he clears and I need to respond to the clearing or if he sets up a remote and I need to get in. So I'm holding on to those. I'm really just looking for, you know, I have the money, I have the whale, I have the data suckers. I really just need personal more personal touches uh, and an ice carver. Uh, you know, just one or two, right? There's, there's two ice carvers in the deck and two more personal touches. Just, just give me one of them. Pro Context would also be nice. Plascrete would also be nice. I'll take one of those. E3 is something that I'm going to use right now that he's got the hostile. Basically, all those blue face down cards, all those ice, suddenly just became archers. A minute ago, none of them were archers. Now they're all archers. See, I'm even thinking he's got an archer on archive. Oh, I guess the one that's advanced is definitely not. But I'm thinking the one on archives uh, is an archer. Right? I mean, 
And he just installed it after installing the hostel. And it's like, well, yep, that'll prevent me for sure from uh, filling up my data suckers if you just put the Archer on archives. What else am I supposed to do? You know, and, and uh, you know, being overly cautious, uh, you know, prevents me from getting screwed, right? It's like, you know, by assuming the worst in every possible case. Yeah, every ice is an archer, so don't run unless, you know, every face down ice is an archer, at least, except the advanced one. Um, you know, I, I assume he's got, you know, the sea source and the scorch in his hand, you know, but, you know, I keep all the money so he can't sea source me. But by assuming all these things, um, playing it super safe. Makes it really hard for him. Uh, sadly, he hasn't set up a remote yet, which is good and bad. On the one hand, it means that uh, it's more time for me to set up, right? So, but on the bad times, it gives me nothing to do because I can't safely go into R&D. He's clearing virus counters uh, pretty much any time I get the stuff going. Uh, he's clearing. So I'll just sit here and collect my money. Um, you know, which makes up for the lack of an E3 in case he's got uh, many subroutines. Armitage code busting. If you don't use your magnum opus more than six times in the game, why was it a magnum opus and not a marmitude? That's the question. All right, he started setting up a remote. So I'm assuming that's an archer for sure. It's really defending HQ, and it's like, you know, the game's been going on so long, I know there's agendas in HQ, but because he just has so many advancements, it's like, what am I going to do? Waste a click running HQ. He reses that ice wall for one, and I can't get in, and I'll never be able to get in. Great. You know, what? What? there's no point in wasting time on that. I basically can't go into HQ because he advanced that ice wall, and he knew what I was doing. Did ice wall just beat my whole deck? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it did. And still... It could be Swarm. I don't have an E3 yet. Boy, would I like one. E3 makes a big difference in this deck. You install it once for two, and suddenly Archer becomes five to break instead of eight. That's three credits per run for a one-time cost of two. That is a huge deal, economically speaking. Especially even on some of these ice like Shadow... Or Caduceus. It's like a whole credit per run. <laughs> Alright, is he going to make use of his remote now? My whale is at strength 2, plus 1 personal touch is 3. On my next turn it will be 4. Inspecting his ice. <laughs> and two ice on archives. Yeah, if archives was wide open, my data suckers would be just whoosh, I'd run anywhere I wanted to. I would probably already have run like archives, archives, R and D. Oh, he's replacing one of his archives ice. See, now that really... See, now I, I was thinking there was an archer on archives before. Now I'm really thinking there is, right? He just wants... He installed something in the remote, right? There's probably an archer in front of that. I guess he can't res both archers, but he doesn't need to, right? It's like... 
if I run archives and he reses it, all right, so here we go. I surge the whale and I surge it again. You might be like, why are you surging it twice? Why did you surge it twice? Why? You could have surged it once, right? And maybe that was a mistake, but it allowed me to just run the remote immediately without having to run archives and cost me a lot of money. And it also uh, meant that I would get through a Hadrian's. That could have been Hadrian's and not Archer. And if I was at strength six, uh, I would have been upset. Of course, the joke's on me because it wasn't an agenda. It was Action Jackson, Jesus Howard, which he just immediately used. And I wasted two surges to get rid of Action Jackson, which really didn't get rid of him. All it did is let him put his transactions back into R&D. Wah, wah, that was probably the move that lost me the game. I could have surged once, and if it was Hadrian's Wall, just dealt with it. Not the worst. He would have had to spend 10 credits for it, which is not bad. Uh, I could have surged once and ran archives to get some data suckers, and then ran. Not the worst idea either. If you put the Hadrian's in archives, it's like, okay, dude. <laughs> um... But yeah, I'm going to run R&D. Since I surged, right, and I still have a click left, I run R&D. He doesn't res the first ice. It's probably Archer, and he's only going to res it if it hits, because it costs him a whole point. Uh, it's weak, so we got Hunter Shadow. That's six credits for me, and I have a bad pub, so it costs me five. I get in. I see a card. It's just an ice or something. And he clears virus counters after my double surge. Right, so, want want, Joke's on me. I wasted a ton of resources to do almost nothing. So, now I got pro context. Let's dig into this deck and find the cards that are really going to help me keep pace. Right? Hmm, video, I can see his hand, maybe. Uh, there's got to be a... You know, at this point in the game, he hasn't... The only thing he's scored is a hostile. He's drawn so many cards. He used Jackson Howard to put transactions back in the deck. HQ is probably full of agendas, but he's happy with that. Because he's got that many advanced ice wall, allowing him to hold agendas all day. And there he goes. Install. And... I think he installed, took a credit, and advanced. Yep, well, if I can't run there, because I only got strength three right now. I'm just being super overly cautious here. Right. I, everything's an archer. The one that's faced down in R&D, archer. Archives, archer. Remote, archer, right? So it's like, whichever one I run first... Uh, is going to nail me, right? I have to, have to run one of them. And I can't run HQ to get data sucker tokens. So it's like, well, you want to get data sucker tokens? you got to run somewhere. Wherever you run, Archer. So we'll catch 22, just playing it super safe. See, I could deja vu surge, but uh, even then, uh, I'm only going to be up to five. And he's still going to be able to score whatever that is in that remote. So in case that's a posted bounty, uh, I mean, even if it is a posted bounty, it's only advanced once, but you know, never a bad idea to install a Plaskrete against the big W. Use my pro context. Keep looking for the cards I need. And I'm going to deja vu a surge into my hand. Throw out my spare whale. Alright, 
There he goes, advancing three times. And it is fracking. So it's three to two. Well, yeah, I think we were discussing the fact that he uh, discarded and then scored. Uh, according to the timing chart, you have to, you know, you have to score before your discard phase. Not a big deal. Didn't really make a difference. But you know, that's that is the correct sequence. Okay, so here comes my medium. He just scored. He didn't, you know, so that his timing on clearing has decreased, right? So my whale got bigger. I surged to get up to six strength. Uh, total with the personal touch. So I'm not afraid of his archer. He doesn't res because I can break the archer. I would have res if I were him uh, simply because it would have cost me eight credits every single time to get through. So I see a Hadrian's. Oh, so sad. I run R&D again, he, right? Get my medium going. And up, oh, Hadrian's in a beanstalk. Boring. Why couldn't there be some points there, right? I guess they're all in his hand, happily defended by that giant ice wall that I'll never be able to break. And he clears virus counters, of course. Every time I get something going, every time I have data suckers, any time I have medium tokens, up, oh, clear. And you know what? It's the fact that you know that he has HQ protected is what allows him to clear so often whenever he needs to, because. Um, you know, handful of agendas, but he's not in a rush to score them. Uh, he can just hold on to them. He doesn't need to be in a hurry. He can take his time. He can, you know, throw out the other cards in the trash. He can just keep clearing and wait for that window when he's able to score. Uh, now, that could go very badly for him. Uh... Because if I draw my personal touch or my ice carver or both, right, then you know I'll pretty much always be at strength three. Uh, if I get two of them, then I'm basically, you know, always at strength uh, four, and it'll only take me like two turns to get to six. <laughs> okay, so he's icing up. I assume that's the Hadrians because um, I saw it on R and D. And he just installed it. Like if you see an ice in R and D, uh, and then you draw, you see the corp draw it, and then uh, they install an ice. It's probably that ice you just saw them draw. So I really can't get the cards I'm looking for. I keep drawing, throw out a gin because I don't even have memory to install the gin. Really, I use gin not so much for its memory, but for its tutoring abilities. Uh, what I have now, a Darwin, two data suckers, and a medium. I'm happy with that. Like, oh yeah, sure. I don't, I don't really need any other programs. Um, okay, so behind his two ice, one of which is almost definitely Hadrian's Wall. He installed advance advances. My Darwin is at strength four now. Between its three virus counters and the personal touch. Right, 
thinking real hard about what to do with that remote, right? I mean, that could be government contracts or Project Atlas. If it's Project Atlas, then uh, he's two hostile takeovers away from winning uh, if I let him score it. So I'm going to infiltrate the front ice in R&D. Yep, it is Archer. I was right. I was just verifying my fears. Because uh, he never rezzed it, right? So it could have just been Hadrian's, which if it was, I would have run there for sure. Um... to try to make him res it and spend his money so that he couldn't advance or res anything else. All right, that's, that's a common strategy is run the place you don't want to get into, usually not the remote, right? so that they have to spend money resing ice uh, and then run the remote. So I'm just going to run this remote and see what happens. The front one I'm pretty sure is Hadrian's wall. So see if he'll res it. I'm basically just trying to get him to res that Hadrian's wall. Uh, he says he's not rezzing that Hadrian's Wall, which really makes me think, yep, he's the back one's Archer also. And I can't afford to let two programs get trashed, because then it's, I mean, it's going to be, it's game over either way. I'm already in a bad situation here. All right, if, he's, if he gets the Atlas, I'm in deep trouble. Uh, all right, yep, so I give up. <laughs> I'm not, I jacked out after that unrezzed. Most likely Hadrian's Wall. And it is, what is it? Oh, yeah, that's an Atlas. So these two hostile takeovers away from game over. But for me, uh, my whale is now at five, and I have an Ice Carver. A little bit late, <laughs> two turns away from losing. Uh, but now I got strength six, so I'm going to run RD. Whoosh. All right. Run R&D on click two. He will not res his archer, so I will spend a bunch of credits to break the three subroutines on the other ice. Da, 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 da. And I will see one card. It's a green level clearance. I will run R&D again. Spending six credits, but I have the bad pub is why I'm only spending less than that. It's Action Jackson, so I use my three wizard credits to trash him. And last click, also run R&D. I think I, I messed up my credits there. I think I spent one unnecessarily because they got out. I didn't reorganize them after each run. Oh, nothing. Oof, I saw four total cards in there, didn't get even one point. And he clears virus counters. Yeah, if he didn't clear virus counters there, I would have ravaged uh, R&D on the next turn, for sure. I would have dug deep. But it means I get two turns in a row. And the turn he spent clearing virus counters is a turn he's not scoring uh, the two hostile takeovers he needs to win. But since he has an archer and four credits, can't run R&D right now. So I'm just gonna... I can't really do anything. I just have to you know, build up my money and, and try to build up my whale strength. Okay, there he goes. He's going to get a hostile takeover. So if he gets another turn... Then it's going to be game over. I could... Ooh, he's shuffling, though. So if I run R&D, uh, I could theoretically um, get some new stuff. Right? See new cards I didn't see before. Uh, and if I can get the hostile takeover from R&D then this game can go on. I've got one turn. He does have enough credits to res the archer and pay for the hostile takeover, so... Yep, I've got an ice carver, a personal touch, and two virus tokens. That's strength four. I have two data suckers, so my only hope, really... I try to draw a surge. There's only one left in the deck. No. Um, so I have to risk it. Right, it's the last turn anyway. 
So if I get hit by Archer, I mean, I was going to lose if there is really an Archer on Archive. So I uh, look, oh, so I gambled looking again. I should have just, um, all right, so now I'm going to, with my uh, third click, <laughs> two clicks away from losing. I'll take a risk running the archives. Yep. Because I'm going to lose anyway. What is it? It's an ice wall. All right, I break that. And it's a shadow. Oh, see, look at this. I could have been running archives this whole game. I could have taken that atlas. I could have taken that. Uh, I could have taken everything if I knew that the ice on archives were weak. Those two data suckers, I could have just won with those. Uh, but because I was super cautious and believed that I, I was, A, keeping a ton of money to defend from the Scorch, which he threw away, seeing how cautious I was and that he was basically giving up and realized he could never pull it off. See, they were all in the trash. Uh, and B, because I thought Archives had an archer or something and I couldn't risk that, um, I ended up letting him score agendas that I could have taken by running Archives, getting Data Suckers, then running the remote. Uh, so now that I have the data suckers, my last click in the whole game. Uh, if I don't take a hostile takeover here, I lose. And it's... Oh, it's a wall static. So that's the end. He's going to just get a hostile takeover. And if he has one in the deck, does he have one? I mean, what Wayland deck doesn't have three hostile takeovers? There it is. All right. And it wasn't... It was way deep down. There you go. Um, you know, being cautious is good, but sometimes uh, too much caution can be a problem, right? It's like, yes, I, I succeeded in making it impossible for him to scorch me, um, and I succeeded in avoiding getting hit by archers. There was an archer back there. I was right to jack out. Um, but I failed in taking anything due to lack of aggression. Um, Maybe something I could have done is I did have those infiltrations, and I used one of them to verify that ice on R&D was indeed an archer, so I didn't get hit by a bluff. I perhaps could have double infiltrated the archives. Uh, if I had double infiltrated the archives ice, I would have seen that it was safe, uh, and that would have forced him to put a nasty ice over there. Um, maybe, you know, he probably would have had to put a Hadrian's over there, which, you know, he could have done. Uh, but then he would have had to spend the 10 credits on that. And spending the 10 credits on that Hadrian's on Archives probably would have set him back enough uh, for me to, you know, get ahead there. Especially if he ever went below 4 credits, uh, I would have had a field day running uh, against his unarcherable servers. Right? Ooh, there was a snare in that deck. Glad I didn't hit that. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so there you have it. Uh, a lesson in defense... And a lesson in too much defense. Um, enjoy. And uh, I will see you again with more videos from this tournament soon.